Hi, I'm Tyson with Adventure Rig, and behind me we have Baja Betty version 2.0. If you guys follow us on Instagram, you may have seen that last fall we went down to Mexico with Baja Betty version 1.0. After we got back, we sold the van, and over the summer, we found this one. It's a little bit newer, a little bit lower mileage. One thing that we were missing in Baja, though, is solar. So I've taken the last couple weeks and installed solar on this van. Now, I'm not gonna go in depth about how I chose the components that I did and maybe why I chose the wiring that I did. There's so much information out there on that. However, I wasn't finding a lot of information as far as this van or a van with a fiberglass roof and how to get all the wiring into the van and then maybe where I could locate the charge controller and all the wiring. So that's really what I'm gonna go through here. So to start with, let's hop up onto the top here and we'll start with the solar panel and how we went into the van from there. I will say that I think 99% of everything I bought came directly off of Amazon. In the description, I'm going to have all of the links for everything that I used. There are affiliate links. We do earn some money off of them. If you use them, it would be great. If not, no worries. We just appreciate you watching. So this panel is a Renogy 160 watt panel. The reason that I chose this one is because of its length. I was really limited because of the curvature of the roof as to what panels I could put on here. And I also didn't want the panel hanging off the back by a lot. This is really the only one I could find in these dimensions. Also, we just obviously have the one. I do have two ground mounted panels that I will be able to plug into the side of the van. And we'll get to that here in a little bit. Now you can see that I have some additional feet mounted on this. So not only the two feet in the back, as well as the two feet in the front, but I also have two mounted in the center and then one in the very center up front. The reason for that is because how I mounted this panel on the fiberglass roof is with double-sided tape. Now this is actually VHB tape, it's 3M, and it is extremely sticky. It's what they put on the GoPro mounts. I have seen other people do this. AM Solar was someone that also sells that tape. This is something that they've done in the past. So I would say it's an approved method. However, we've only driven the van from here to in there a couple times. So far the panel hasn't ripped off, but talk to us again in about three months after we get back from Mexico. We'll make sure that that is still on the roof. Now from here, I actually cut the connectors off of this panel because they were so long. I didn't wanna put them through the hole on this fiberglass piece here that covers this air conditioner because that hole would have to be huge. So I ended up cutting the wiring off at about six inches. I took eight gauge wire with a butt connector and I spliced that eight gauge wire to the stock wiring on the solar panel. Then I have a through the roof gland mount on the top of this piece of fiberglass and the cables are fed through that and then they go right into the back of the air conditioner here. Now what's nice about this is when you take this cover off, there's just this really thin piece of, it, it looks like cardboard, but it's plastic. It's kind of the same stuff that they put underneath travel trailers to enclose the underbelly. That's what the entire casing is around the AC that keeps the AC on the exterior and everything else on the interior of the van. So really all I did was make a slit in that with the knife and then I fed the two wires right through that and they go into the cabinet that's located right here inside the van. You can see that I then filled it with expanding foam so that it's still completely sealed off. But it was actually really easy. I couldn't find much information online about doing that. So maybe something like that will help you guys. Now, if we take a step back down onto the ground, I can show you how I ran the wires and where they all go. You can see that we have our AC right here and those cables are routed out the side and into this cabinet right here in the corner of the van. After they come through that cabinet, the wires are then tucked behind this piece of trim here, as well as this entire piece of trim that goes down the entire side of the van. What's nice is this trim is only held on 
with three screws. You can easily pop those caps off, get the screws, remove this trim. Once I fed it down this back corner, it then goes into this box right here. So this box contains the water heater as well as the propane heater for the van. I took this top cover off again, it's just some screws that hold it on, and I just routed the wires through this entire box all the way to the front of the box where that's where that's where all the magic happens. We're gonna dive into that here in just a second. We're gonna talk about wiring to these batteries here. So this is my battery bank. It's really, it's actually a really crappy battery bank. It's just what came stock on the van. They're just a deep cycle marine RV battery. I would never recommend anyone buy them. It's what we have and I wasn't gonna replace them. The person just literally bought them when we bought the van. So we'll see how they do. If they don't do the job, then I will, I guess, upgrade them, but it is what it is. I'm wired into the batteries with the Victron BMV 712 battery monitor. And that's where all of the information is coming from as far as the health of my batteries, the charge, the amperage, watts that are coming off the solar panel. Actually, the watts are gonna be going through the solar charge controller, but uh, amps and volts for the battery here. Now, if you tuck underneath, you can see that there's a box under there that has some goop around it. And that is bolted directly to the frame of the van. And what's inside of that is the shunt for the BMV 712 battery monitor. It requires a shunt so that it knows and gets all of the correct information going to it. There's also on the batteries here is a, a temperature sensor and that again plugs into the shunt. I have a temperature sensor because everything's inside the van, batteries are mounted outside the van and nothing's gonna charge correctly if the batteries are not at the temperature that this stuff thinks it's at. So it requires an external battery temp sensor because like I said, they're out here, everything else is inside. If we go into the van, this is the box that I was talking about. So everything's located under here. Now I did have to remake this cover that I'm holding because originally, this box or this piece of wood here was actually up against the wheel well and it didn't give me enough space so i pulled it out from the wheel well and then just reattached it into the floor and into the side and it now houses everything for the solar so i have the roof mounted cable on the bottom this center one is a ground cable and then this top one actually goes to the BMV 712 battery monitor. You can see that the charge controller is also a Victron Energy, it's the 130. I like these Victron Energy deals, I've never used them in the past, but it's awesome because everything's Bluetooth, so on my phone I can see the health of everything, it's really dang cool. Also you can see that I do have two fuse blocks mounted here, a positive as well as a negative. The reason that I have this fuse block is because I forgot to show you where the batteries are. I'll, th I'll throw a shot in, but what that is, is that's where I plug in my ground mounted panels. That's a piece that's from AM Solar. As far as I know, they're the only ones that sell it. And I literally can plug in my panels on the ground into that plug on the van. That is then fed into these fuse blocks as well as that mounted panel on the roof. And then from there, those two are combined and they go to the charge controller. Uh, then the charge controller is also fed directly to the battery as well. Um, underneath the van, I just had to drill two holes to get all of that wiring through. And literally those two holes are about right here underneath the seat. Um, pretty simple install. It did take me like everything forever, but uh, we got it in and we're gonna test it out down in Baja. What's nice about having those ground mounted panels is we wanna be able to park in the shade and keep the van cool. Well, that's not gonna do much for the panel on the roof. So I would like to have maybe 20 or 25 feet of eight gauge wire running to the two ground mounted panels. And I'm thinking maybe 150 watt panels. 
and uh, and then those we can set in the sun even though the van is in the shade. We're hoping it works well. We really don't use a lot of electricity. Uh, we have an inverter in here, so we'll be charging things like phones, cameras, computers. Other than that, the lights are all LED. I swap those out. That saves a ton of energy, but we just don't use a lot. Um, the fridge to run that, I mean, it runs on propane, but it still needs a little bit of battery power. So that'll be used, but we won't use the hot water heater, use the water pump a little bit here and there, but I think it'll work. And like I said, I guess if it doesn't, we'll upgrade the batteries at that point. But I think we should definitely have enough solar for them. You've heard me mention the battery monitor a couple times now. That's what this guy is right here. Um, you can see that it tells me the voltage on the batteries. It actually tells me a ton of stuff, but the voltage and watts, how many amps I'm using, the temperature of the batteries, all that stuff. So uh, that's really important to have because if you don't know the health of your batteries, then how do you know how charged they are or how discharged they are? And how do you know if you need to turn lights off or turn uh, appliances off because you don't actually have the battery power? Uh, for us, these are flooded lead acid battery. You really don't want to take those down below 50%. Personally, for me, the flooded batteries that I have on our travel trailer, I don't like taking below 80%. Uh, it just really decreases their lifespan uh, the further down you go with them. So that's what this does. It makes sure that we don't discharge the batteries too much. If you guys have any questions about this install, feel free to let me know. There is a ton of information already out there online. That's why I didn't really want to go too in depth about it. I just wanted to run you through the way that I did it in this particular van. Hopefully it helps you, gives you some ideas if you're looking to install in an existing floor plan. Again, if you are looking at doing your own solar project, please use our affiliate links because that does help us out. We appreciate it. Also find us over on Instagram and Facebook at Adventure Rig. We're gonna be heading down to Baja here probably about four to six weeks. I'm sure it'll be an epic trip if it was anything like last year. So follow along, we'd love to have you. Thanks again for watching. I'm Tyson with Adventure Rig.